Different memory growing up in East Side, West Side. Like, well, um, I was born out. I was born and raised on a place called Spiegel Spiegel Hill back in the day. It's called Spiegel Heights now. I was born and raised there. Uh, went to church over on a place called, called Pleasant Green Hill, and that's named that's the my church. I think uh, it's called Pleasant Green Baptist Church. I've been a member there, what have you. And I went to the old Dunbar Junior High and, and high school. And then I left there and went to Henry Clay. Read, end up graduating from there, but as I was telling someone earlier, was back in the day we used to walk from Speaker Heights to Dunbar. It's about about a mile, mile and a half walk. We used to do that every day, five days a week, snow, rain, or whatever. It's just some of the things we used to do and what have you. And I remember the old lyric show. I used to go to that when it was prior to that, you know, with them uh, 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 abandoning the store and stuff like that. Remember that, what have you? But I did. I was I was too young when they. He had Duke, Duke Ellington and Kemp Basin and pieces like that. That was my dad and mama's era and whatever. But other than that, I, the time I was here in Lexington, the population was around 65,000 people. Now it's like 335 or 340,000 people. So it's changed a whole lot and everything. And when I was coming up, there was not a St. Martin Village black subdivision. There wasn't a. And we got that, got the subdivision because of a man named Fister. A lot of the black students and things used to uh, help him pick crops and whatever. So he when so he ended up selling the land. That's where you got St. Martin Village subdivision, the first black subdivision here in Lexington. Just like that. So, what's your favorite memory of growing up in Lexington? Well, I didn't grow up in Lexington. <laughs> I've been here since 70, 77. Why'd you come to Lexington? Actually, I came to Lexington after I, after undergraduate school. I graduated from Kentucky State. What was your, what was it like back when you first moved here? What was Lexington like? Well, Lexington is a hard city to get into if you're an outsider. A people that are indigenous to Lexington, they have a much easier time because they know uh, the people in Lexington. But as an outsider, it was hard to uh, graduate, get into uh, Lexington and meet the residents and uh, the people here in Bay County. But after you've been here a number of years, as I have, you get to know quite a few people. I got about so many kids, grown-ups, and great-grandkids, and all that that I love. I love. I've been Lexington all my life. Uh, when I came, I came to Lexington uh, to go to school, uh, um, and um, I moved. I was told that I could move into the East End area and go to school, you know, through, through, through the government, uh, and I did. And at the time, you know, they, they were saying that it was not supposed to be all that a nice place, but it was, when I got there, it was a beautiful place. It was really uh, a little village. It was beautiful. A nice village, yeah. You know, East End, the East mm -hmm. End. What was beautiful about it? Well, I mean, it, it was uh, uh, the, the, the uh, as far as the, the, the area itself, the, the trees, the environment, the people, you know, uh, at that time, the people were like really uh, all, you know, you had plenty of people, kids and everything, and everybody was, you know, was get, they got along. You had a lot of business in the area. And you had a lot of things happening, you know, that you, could, you know, were close to. Any locations in general, whether that's restaurants or like places that you would socialize or or anything. Well, I, I mean, I've I've been uh, to most of the areas that existed at that time. I mean, TDs is still there. TDs was a. Uh, um, uh, ent uh, entertainment, uh, musical entertainment uh, club, and uh, you had uh, about three, four other clubs on the street. You had a guy that had on Dewey's, on Dewey's, they called it Dewey's, and before they changed the name. You had Nate's, you had uh, the Palace, uh, that was uh, 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 
was oh, okay, let's go his name. Not Paul, but Paul, uh, one of the Hall uh, Hall brothers, ran in, and uh, you know, you had just had things going on that were, you know, the entertainment type thing. And then you were, like I said, with the East, then you had the basketball courts games going on. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about the East Side? Well, well, the East Side has changed a lot. I mean, it's a historic side of town, East Side. Uh, we, I'm a part of uh, the North Limestone Association, and I'm, I belong to an organization. I am president of the ACT Production Team, Afro Americans for Cultural Traditionalists, and uh, we're an arts uh, program. We we study art, religion, uh, we debate. You know, politics, anything you want to talk about, we talk about. We, we're artists. We did a, a water tower over there on the, uh, for the water company and uh, one of those other nonprofits like NOLA, I think. Uh, we did that with Lennon Muskiski of the Lexington Arts. And uh, it was all right. I mean, the input, we didn't get the right input for that I was satisfied with for the community. And the same with the East End. I, I'm, I'm still over there, and I, I really don't, you know, I don't feel the same with it because some of the great things about it are, are gone. They can't be, just be, you know, created again. You know, they, they have to be uh, uh, given the attention of being something great as far as uh, part of a legacy of something, even the... Uh, the uh, Isaac Murphy Park, it looks like a, I mean, it looks, it's the ugliest park in town to me, even though it should be the most beautiful. And this, I think it's the city government's problem that they have overlooked it. And the idea that you would neglect something that has so much history in it and has been, been a part of original neglect. As far as Mr. Murphy, he, he's the reason for the, the East End's greatest, greatness. But yet he doesn't have a bronze statue. He's got a statue made like some of my cut out animals over here. Can you tell me more about Mr. Murphy? Well, yeah, Isaac Murphy was uh, one of the, well, there are other great jockeys here, but he was one of the greatest. He was probably the greatest American jockey. At the time, he was one that, I guess, uh, the first to win three Kentucky Derbies. So that put horse racing on the map. But Mr. Murphy was uh, cut short and many other jockeys. You don't see too many jockeys, black jockeys in racing today because they were uh, the union affected by the union's actions. And so when I say something about the union, as far as when I say, well, the other people need to take Concern, I would like to see a bronze statue of him and some other things, you know. And but when it comes to people saying, Oh, we, we don't have this, you don't have, you have millions of dollars made from the man's carcass, you moved him to the horse farm. Now, the horses like man of war, and other horses would never have one if they didn't have somebody like him to ride. So he he is he is one of the, the greatest uh, Lexington's greatest. Like Muhammad Ali would be Louisville's greatest. So, but it, it to me it is an insult to have a park like is up there that they have in this east side. And it's also an insult not to back his greatness and the people coming back on a day like the East End Day. To celebrate his greatness because his greatness is his. He built the East End. My favorite memory growing up here was we grew, I grew up just a few blocks from where we are right now on a little street called Kincaid Street. The first 10 years of my life were spent there. So this was an area that I was used to. Um, we were talking earlier, I was asking, I can't remember exactly what was on this particular corner right here. 
but across the street there was Foley's Liquor Store in the lot. And that was where on Friday evening, you know, all the guys would come past, cash their paychecks and they'd hang out at Foley's. Uh, there was a little grocery store on the lot where the clinic is now. The lyric was right where it is, and somebody was saying there used to be an old ice house that sat here. Uh, but my favorite memory is growing up, and on Sundays, we would get up, go to church, you come home, you ate dinner, and then after dinner, you got your allowance, and we were allowed to come to the lyric uh, and watch a movie. Uh, I can remember watching the original Ben-Hur uh, with Charlton Heston. We got to see right here at the Lyric, and that was one Sunday after coming from church, and all of us kids were allowed to go to the movies. I never participated in any full sports, but I was always a huge football fan, and I still am. Uh, I can remember going to Dunbar and walking out to UK campus, to Stoll Field, to watch ball games. Um, I can remember um, walking out in the West End and going to Douglas Park to go swimming because that was the park that had the pool where we were allowed to go swim. So that was a big thing for us that we would, and we would walk everywhere we went. Uh, here in the East End, we would go to uh, Charles Young Center. That was where we skated. The basketball court, the floor, of course, that nice wood floor, and uh, that was where we would go skating at was there. I can remember dancing around, trying to anyway, and skate at Charles Young. Did they ever play uh, music? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it was just like a skating rink. They would play the music of the day, whatever it was, and, and that was what we skated to. But it was a lot of fun. We had a great childhood. And one of the things that someone was talking about the other day was being poor. We didn't realize we were poor. Didn't make that much. We had three meals a day. We had a roof over our heads. Uh, we had a good life. You know, our parents made sure we had everything we needed, and we didn't worry about the rest of it. We didn't know what we were missing. Uh, I can remember the first 10 years of my life, me, my grandmother, my sister, and my brother, we lived in a three-room house. Uh, that was where we lived. It was, you know, that was just it. But it was a good place to grow up. <clears throat> I left here. I was gone for a lot of years, but I came back because that was how I felt about Lexington. It was always a good place to grow up. It was a good place to raise a family. So when I came back home, when my daughter was young, uh, it was like, yeah, this is a good place for her to grow up. It was a good place for me to grow up. And I hate to see the changes that have occurred that you can't do kids can't do those things anymore and hopefully one day we'll get back to that so uh what was your uh favorite memory of growing up in lexington Whew, I, I i got a lot of favorite memories of growing up in lexington i mean to, to, to say what my favorite is well that that that, that is tough but but definitely the, 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 the okay, friendships so I had in St. Martin's Village and, and in Oakwood and in Bryan Station in general. I'm a Bryan Station High School graduate. Um, uh, the closest of my, of, of my football teammates there. Uh, just the camaraderie I had with, with, with all the neighborhood friends, and like the, uh, friends throughout the community. I mean, that's really, really special to me. Were you involved in any clubs or sports? Oh, yes. I was, I was involved in, in, in both. Uh, both I was um, uh, played football for Bryan Station, ran track for Bryan Station, um, was in the fellowship of Christian athletes, uh, was in student council, which is probably not surprising. <laughs> Very active in student government. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I was, I was, I was pretty busy at Bryan Station. Uh, have you ever seen the movie Remember the Titans with Denzel Washington? Okay. Well, I live that movie, and, and I, I've said this on the Senate floor a lot of times. Uh, a time when America was really going through a lot of uh, racial upheaval and, and racial turmoil, and and and, 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 and 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 young blacks and young whites were just trying to figure that out. 
Um, and, and my football teammates at Bryan Station were, 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 were really a part of that, that, that late 60s experience. We were really trying to, to figure things out uh, and, and how to be close and how to get along. Um, and um, we, we really were leaders in the high school in that, in, in that endeavor. Um, uh, the white and black uh, football players were, were really close because we had a good football team. So uh, you know, we were successful both on the field and off the field. Uh, and, and, and just and just living through that environment and developing th that, that closeness across racial lines, I, I think we all grew from that. When I lived here, before I went to Pennsylvania, I went to Bryan Station in Union College, and then I moved to Pennsylvania, lived there for 30 years, and Bryan Station Defender Alumni. <laughs> I, I went to Arlington Elementary here. I played softball here in Lexington long for a long time. But this is my first time being here at this. What's your favorite memory of growing up in Lexington? Um, just being here, uh, living here all my life, being here and uh, being around family and uh, just seeing um, our community, the changes that have been made in a positive way, and just all the organizations over the years that have um, come in to help, you know, the kids and things like that. So that, that means a lot to me. Where'd you go to school? I went to, as far as high school, I went to Bryan Station. So Defender for Life, <laughs> class of 1986. What was Lexington like when you were growing up there? Um... For me, I guess, um, I mean, I guess I was able, where I lived uh, before moving probably outside of the, uh, outside of the city, um, for me and my age group, I did see a lot of diversity because even at Braun Station, so I had already started seeing the diversity then. So um, even though I did hear other stories, of course, of people that's a little older when it hadn't always been like that, but um, I was um, had the opportunity to be at school and to have that diversity kind of growing up, you know, all the way from, you know, when I was younger, all the way through high school. Being able to come out to events like this and, and then new organizations like we're doing now with the African American Sports Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. So um, those are just great things that's going on in Lexington, like currently right now. What was it like joining the police, uh, the police force that young? Um, it was fun. Actually, and I never really thought about police career. I was working at Humana Hospital at the time, and I start, I seen a job opening for communication, so answer like the 911 calls. Mm -hmm. So I just said, you know, I'll, I'll apply, and I did. I didn't know uh, the best decision I was making at that time, and I'm just glad I stuck through. And, and 27 years later, you know, I was able to retire at 47 years old. Uh, earlier you mentioned uh, changes, that you've seen things change for the better. What are some of those changes that you've seen that you think have really made Lexington an even better place? Well, I mean, just um, I, I started seeing a lot of organizations trying to come together and, um, and definitely to, to help with the young people and uh, so uh, to, to collaborate more. So I just, I just think that's necessary. I think that when everybody comes in and does a little bit, we can get a lot done. And so I've been able to see that over the years. Not saying that it's always been done the right way, but that's just the you know the atmosphere that I have been able to work up under and to collaborate. Uh, just like with Community Inspired Solutions, like with PAL, we did a lot of collaboration over the years. So those kind of things are very, uh, very positive for the community and to be able to leave uh, tangible things for our community. I'm Sylvia Ferris McCann. Um, I was raised in the uh, East End area. Um, I um, was from a sibling of um, eight kids, and we um, have also grown up in the area of the Ray Street area. I'm from actually Rand Avenue, um, which is over by the Shallow uh, Shallow Baptist Church behind, and um, grew up there as a young child. Um, as I got older, 
I actually moved into the Rose Street apartment. So um, I've actually lived here in this area for a little while. I've heard stories of um, the Wee Street, but that was before my time. I'm actually 53, so but I've heard stories, and I was probably at least um, maybe four or five, maybe when uh, you know the, the Wee Street started to kind of fade away. So I've heard stories. I've heard I've had aunties that lived in this area on Fifth Street, and. Um, aunties that lived in the Dewey's uh, area, street area. Uh, as I got older, I moved away from um, this area, so I'm out um, a little bit out distance now. But so, I, but I come here as often as I can. My home church is Phillips Memorial, which is still here in the East End community area. Um, I still attend there, um, so I visit here quite often, even riding through the neighborhood, but I've seen how it's changed um, a lot, and so I guess these stories will be told to my children, but it's it's really changed so where it's, it's nice and where the community is kind of trying to come together and um, build um, off of our legacy um, around our uh, lyrics theater as well. My name is Ron Berry and uh, my interesting facts about me is that uh, I want to be active. I feel like that I'm going to serve my purpose and to provide my skills that God gave me to help the community in every way I could. What high school did you go to? No, no, high school. Co and elementary is college. Elementary school. Uh, mm -hmm. So middle school, do they have like, were they combined? Junior high? Junior no, high? Well, we went from Cabo from first to sixth grade. Oh. And then we went to a Dunbar from seven to twelve. So if I was in seventh grade, how old would I be? How uh, old you when you're seventy? In, the, in the seventh grade. I think you're like 12 and 13. 12 and, 13. and you in school with people who are 20 and 21 years old. So we all go to school together. So that's how we know it were at. Because it was, it was that time it was segregated and you didn't have any uh, white kids go to our school. Mm -hmm. The white school, uh, kids would go to one school and we go to another school. So, what's your name? 1963. Were there any things that you like um, that kind of made an impact on you while you were in high school? I think mean, getting to know everybody. And also, when I was in high school, I was always an adult. I always felt like, and so I, in high school, also I learned to, that we were more like a family, you know, and that there was things that my goal was. I always wanted, I always wanted to be a uh, civil rights worker. And that's what I started out doing, that's what I ended up doing. How was it like when we met in high school, like, uh, like, during that time period? Yeah. Where in Lexington was, it was like two cities, one side for the blacks, one side for the whites. And uh, we lived in what's called a, a neighborhood called Speakers Hill. And we went to separate schools, we went to separate theaters, we went to separate, anything you could think of church, anything you could think of was just separate. And I just thought that we should have the same thing everybody else had. I thought that a bus should pick us up, take us to school instead of us walking to school. I thought when I went to school that the equipment they gave us that came from uh, Henry Clay High School should not be given to us when they got through it. They got brand new and I typed right we couldn't type on them. They were broke up. Uh, we were using sand class. I thought we had double standards. And my role was, as I saw it, to, to fight for justice, to fight for freedom. Uh, when we go down to town, we couldn't, we go down to the theaters. Um, we couldn't go and sit down on the bottom. We had to go out a hundred steps to what's called Ben Alley. And then under this Ben Alley theater, but what they said when you get up, we used to try to watch the movies. And so everything was different. And, and mine was that I had to see a way to make changes. And so later on, my community, back then, she recommended I join this group called CORE, Congress of Racial Equality. 
And from there, I began to learn to be active in it. And we learned how to fight for dignity in the community, how to ask for certain things, so try to move out of there. In my neighborhood, my neighborhood was uh, members of people who worked uh, the labor job. We have any kind of professional life jobs there. They have two or three can be nurses. But we was together. We didn't have a, uh, uh, we had outside restrooms. We had uh, uh, no gas. I uh, remember when they put in all of it in the neighborhood and they tore up the whole neighborhood for years. And they city those they couldn't fix out there because they didn't have the money. So all the neighbors put their houses up. And they got paid to get the sewage put into our neighborhood. And it took us quite a while, but we had holes and ditches, and so we still had to go outside to the back. And it's just, it's different what y'all have now, because everything you got, have now, is there. And so we had to kind of suffer through the whole thing. Um, did you ever experience any scary, like, what is it called? Encounters during what you were in court? Yes. I thought I was gonna die at 25 years old. I was bad. I thought I was a good bad. And uh, uh, and what happened is that I was standing on the picket line, and when I was standing on the picket line up here at uh, Short and uh, Martin Luther King, and uh, so what happened to that? Uh, we tried to get into this restaurant to eat, and this man refused to serve us. So he was black. And we stand out there, trying to go in. Every time we go in there, uh, they would come in there and pick us out, pick us up, and throw us out on the sidewalk. And uh, so uh, they know we're coming. They stand in the door, keep us coming in. And so one day, uh, I went in, and they picked me up and took me four of them by the arm, legs, and there's a telephone post right in front of the door. Threw my head into this telephone post. And uh, I just knew being I was, I was going to die then, that's one. Then one time I was at the same restaurant, and it was a terrible restaurant, there it is. And one man came by me and said, I'm going to kill you, N word. I'm going to kill you. I said, oh, I'll go somewhere. You're supposed to say nothing. You're supposed to let me back. And I said, oh, I have to say something. So I still kept on marching. When Joe Martin's uh, car came back and back bottom, bang! I thought I was dead, but just standing there. I was just too, I thought I was dead, but just couldn't fall down. And so that was scary. And then on that same time that, uh, time was at this restaurant, one of the civil rights, uh, people who's on the demonstration with me, his brother was coming back from Kentucky State from Franklin College. Him and, uh, the library, Mr. O'Rourke. And what happened, they got killed. A man ran them off the road. And then they scared me more. So yes, I have been scared many times. My name is Deborah Falk, and I'm doing business as Dee Dee Rainbow. And an interesting fact about me is that I was hatched right here in Lexington, Kentucky. I went to Bryan Station High School, hmm, class of 1986. Yes. All right. I already have questions. <laughs> yeah, so I just want to say that I started at Mary Todd and I went to Winburn Junior High to Brand Station. And then I swam the equator a few times and then I came back and got my undergrad from the University of Kentucky. And then I left again and got my master's somewhere else and I came home to work on the PhD. Even though I was on the roster for Brian Station senior high, I mostly grew up in juvenile facilities. So while people were uh, enjoying Brian Station and going to the prom and sock hops and, and games, I was locked up in juvenile detention center for still in my daddy's car. Or um, I was at a juvenile facilities for hanging out at the block parties. I grew up in foster homes, juvenile detention center, group homes. Uh, I, I grew up on Cisco Road, a.k.a. Audrey Grievous. What I would love to say that we had back then is when s someone uh, between the ages of adolescence, we, we had programming. 
So, yes, I went to the Coleman house. Um, we had certain judges that would send you off to different places. And I went to St. Matthew's in Louisville. So I got to go to this wonderful Catholic home. And uh, it was a church there. I got my own apartment. So we were taught life skills. While everyone else was in school taking typing, I was learning computers. While they were in home ec, I was in gourmet cooking. While they were in gym, I was doing aerobics. You know, so I began to travel at a young age. And so between the ages of 12 to 16, I knew all the counties in Kentucky because I had traveled to all of them with my social worker. So, did you? My name is L.D. Talbert, and I am retired. I've been retired about three years, and I worked for Lockheed Martin out at the uh, Blue Bear Station. And I worked as an application developer for Lockheed Martin. What type of things did you do for entertainment growing up? Growing up? Yes, sir. Oh, oh man. You know, um, <clears throat> just a little background. I grew up in the 50s mostly. I was born in, in, I was born in the early 40s, so most of my time growing up in the 50s. And my kids like to laugh at me a lot because in the very beginning, um, as a young child, we didn't have TV. So entertainment was listening to radio programs or playing with my friends. You know, I, I lived on a great street. There are a lot of kids out there. So we had a lot of, a lot of uh, fun outside with the kids. I mean, because we played outside all the time, just doing everything. But when it came to entertainment in the house, it was the radio. And it was really late in the mid fifties before we got a TV and I could watch TV programs and things of that nature. Uh, my friends and I would go to the movies occasionally. Uh, I don't remember exactly what year it was, but when the Lyric Theater first opened, then we would spend our Saturday afternoons at the Lyric because back then it was cheap to go to the movies and they used to, have to show movies continuously. You know, and they had like three movies on a Saturday, so you could go and just spend the whole day just watching movies and things of that nature. Was there any like the restaurants everyone would go to when you grew up? Not really. We didn't go to restaurants a lot when I was growing up. Um, it seems to me, I wish I could remember exactly when, you know, there it, it wasn't. It was like a McDonald's and and those kinds of things. I lived in a, in a neighborhood in, on the 600 block of North Upper Street, and you could walk to a donut shop. As a matter of fact, Spalding's donut shop that's out here on uh, Winchester Road used to be a six and limestone. So we could walk up there. It wasn't a restaurant, but I mean, we liked donuts, you know. There was an ice cream parlor across the street from it. Um, and those kind of things. But we didn't go out. My family didn't go out to restaurants to eat and stuff of that nature. I went to Russell Elementary School, which was used to be on 4th Street and Campbell Street. Um, I don't know how old that building was, but technically it was a very old building. You know what I mean? But that didn't bother me. But looking back at it, I'm thinking, what a terrible place to send a kid, <laughs> you know? But that was it. And uh, during the 50s, there was, the schools were segregated. So that was a the black elementary school. And at the time, when we went to high school, it was in the city, it was Dunbar. They just called it, they, they didn't call it Paul Lawrence Dunbar. It was just Dunbar High School, and it was the black high school in the city. Um, and then there was Douglas. My dad was a teacher. My dad taught at Douglas High School, which was the county high school. The city and the county were divided up to two separate entities. And so the county kids went to Douglas and the city kids went to, to Dunbar. And my dad taught at Douglas. So I went to elementary school at Russell, as I say, at 4th and County Street. And when I went to the to high school, back then they didn't have the middle school and all the other stuff. I went to one year at Dunbar, which Dunbar happened to be in the next block up from my street. But regardless, my dad wanted me to go where he works, so I went to Douglas. I thought school was fine. I thought the education I got was fine, although we did not have nearly the 
classes available and so forth that they have today, or even that they had at some of the other schools back then. But what they did give us, I thought was, was pretty good, you know. A lot of kids finished that school and did pretty well later on career-wise and so forth. Now, I know that a lot of people in my neighborhood, they were trying to get petitions together to get that junkyard to either restrict its hours and things of that nature. But, you know, back then, well, even some of that goes on today, the, the, a big company gets the rule over what goes on. They don't pay attention to the neighborhood very much. Would you change anything about how Lexington was or is? Sure. Um, you know, I, again, I lived in a neighborhood that I liked real well. My, my dad didn't like it, but it's the only place he could buy a house in Lexington. Now, it bothered him a lot, but it didn't bother me as a child. It just didn't, I didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't get it, you know. And so it was much later on before Dad was able to move off of Upper Street, move to a, a different area. So, you know, if you think back on it, you think, well, I wish my dad had, had more opportunity to do the things that he wanted to do. And my parents, my parents as a whole, but my, I think my dad felt frustrated. It's like I was talking about the junkyard. Living on the street with, a junk, with an active junkyard bothered him. I didn't care, but it bothered him, and I know why it bothered him. You know, if 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 I had that right now, where I'm living, I'd be really upset with it. But kids don't kids don't let things bother them, but bother us adults, you know. <laughs> my name is Robert Robinson, eighty nine years old. Well, my job was a masonry contractor, and I started out as a bricklayer. Uh, masonry was out, was a uh, down through my family, and. Uh, I went into service. As I got out of service, I took an apprenticeship with a contractor named Austin D. Harb. And I served so four years as an apprentice, and I went from there. When I was growing up, well, uh, the activities that uh, we had as young people were being able to go to Douglas Park. At Douglas Park, they had uh, different leagues, baseball teams and football from different ends of the town. And everybody gathered at Douglas Park for these games. It was a big outing for the softball teams, and uh, that is what we really, really enjoyed. We played uh, uh, football up in that park. We had a, uh, might not know, uh, can recognize it, but we had a golf course up there with nine holes, and we'd have to repeat going around. When we were going up, we had a place that they called uh, Dewey Street. It's still there, but it's nothing like it was at that time. And that's mostly where everybody gathered to go eat or go to a club or something like that. It was a place called the Chicken Shack. And there were most all of us teenagers gathered at to talk and gather and do teenage stuff. Then on the West End of town, up on Roosevelt Boulevard, we had another little restaurant, and we called it the Cozy Corner. And we was at, either at one or the other. And that's where we covered for most of our activities. Um, integration was not around at that time. And so it was mostly all black, and uh, that's what we did. Grocery stores, we had a grocery store down on Georgetown Street, right across from a... Uh, uh, Said from a housing development called Charlotte Court. The market was called MRS Market. And then they had another one down on Main Street, right there where Salvation Army is. They called it the A&P. A&P and MRS Market. That's where we did most of our shopping. We did have little individual grocery stores within the community. But uh, that was all about it. Well, the big events that... Uh, we thought was uh, when some of the musicians would come through and play at the theater, at the Lyric Theater. And uh, we had Cap Calloway come by. We had Louis Armstrong. We had, uh, uh, oh, the blind man, what's his name? Ray Charles. We had all them people to come by and they would give concerts and play play music. And they would give two or three editions 
a night, and they would be here for Friday and Saturday. And when they came to town, you can know just about where everybody's going to be. But uh, I belong to two of the largest social clubs that men had in Lexington. There was the Apex Club and the Omicron uh, Club. And that consisted of all men. Uh, the a Apex Club, I still belong to it. It was organized in 1926. And it was all men's club. And what they what we did at that time, we uh, gathered at one another's house and have a club meeting and decide what we want to do within the community. And um, uh, the Apex Club and the Omicron Club used to have an annual baseball team game down at High Bridge. So everybody would go to High Bridge to see this baseball game. And the proceeds that we made from that game, or uh, whatever, it went to uh, organizations like the Orphan Home and places like that to help in their financial struggles. One of my favorite memories when I was coming up was when a friend of mine uh, introduced me to my wife, Nona, and that's about one of the favorite memories that I have ever had. The other favorite memories was when I used to cook at the uh, McGee's Bakery. It just had opened up, and uh, I was about six, 15, 16 years old, and my sister worked there, excuse me, and so I worked there also. The other favorite memory I had was the baseball team that we had, that we would compete against other teams from different parts of the town. And we really love playing baseball. Is there anything you want to change about your life or anything growing up? Would there be anything I want to change? Hmm. The only thing I would want to really change is uh, when I went to went in service, I went in at 18. And uh, I got out when I was 20. And the only thing that I would like to change is that if I could have uh, forward my education. I learned in later years, and I try to preach this to young people, that you cannot get too much education. But as far as the politics was concerned, I never was really into politics, but I did vote. And I say that if you don't vote, then you don't have a right to say what's going on or what happened, because you gave up the right to vote. So whatever you do, vote, and your vote will count. Throw our eyes and our words in a bigger picture. Plant seeds for the future. For the bigger picture. Community solutions. That's the bigger picture. And we ain't gotta hate. We can get picture. Through our eyes and our words, we can change the climate. Be like that, you pick the verbs. That's the perfect timing. Through our eyes and our words, we gon' speak the truth. In the class, in the street, Ooh, that's enough. Up. See the world through our lens, it's too real to pretend. Bring your violence to an end, that's enough. All the rage in this unity, we just put it out for our community, that's, that's enough. enough. CIS opportunity, we don't do truancy, action speak fluent, that's, that's enough. enough. You don't hear us, you gon' feel us as we speak it. You to light, hands down, we the realest. Through our eyes and our words, in a bigger picture. Playing seeds for the future, for the bigger picture. Community solutions, that's the bigger picture. And we ain't gotta hate, we can get it with you. Through our eyes and our words, we can change the climate. We got action, beat the verbs, that's the perfect timing. Through our eyes and our words, we gon' speak the truth in the class, in the streets, in the booth.